Bible trails The Son of God He is near He chose to walk with us These tribal trails Welcome Joel and Luis. It's really good to come to your place and, and see where you live and see the beautiful garden, flower garden that you have and uh, just, just to find out more about what the Lord has done in both of your lives. I want to start with you, Joel, and uh, ask you uh, a little bit about um, what brought you to Christ and, and the things that brought you to Christ. And I know you already told me some things about some dreams. And uh, I know God uses dreams at times. And the fourth dream that you told me about in particular, I want you to tell me just a little bit about what that fourth dream was about. Fourth dream in the book of life. And he said, my dream is all uh, clouds, like all oh, nice white clouds. And then I was going, I was walking, and then I uh, got so far, then I seen this arch. Nice, nice arch. And on the other side of that arch, there's somebody there, but I can't recall the one or two, but there was a big book on the other side. That's it. It's called the Book of Life. And I was on the other side that's coming up there. And then I asked the or behind me, I said, is uh, so-and-so over here yet? And not yet, they said. So what do you mean by that? I don't know, not yet. Now at that time, you didn't really know anything about the Bible. No, no, no. no. At that time, I didn't know about the Bible. Yeah, and he, like you grew up here on Garden River Reserve, is that the correct name? Yes, yes. And, but you were never taught really anything from the Bible? No, no, no. I never got anything out of it, like, you know. I never got I just went to church, but nobody explained why you go to church, uh -huh. why you're here, or anything about God. No one mentioned nothing about God, why, and nothing about Jesus either. So in other words, we just went there and it like it just turned out a wall. But I, I didn't learn nothing. You didn't know anything about the Book of Life. So at what point did you uh, connect the fact that there's something to do with the Bible and all that? After I got to reading the Bible and I seen it and I said, hey, that's my dream. The Book of Life. Right. You know, I said, this is my dream. So. As Joe read in the Bible about the book of life that he dreamt about, he started to believe in what he was reading and started to believe in God. Do you have dreams at night? When I do, I usually can't remember much about them. Some are strange and some are just silly. We should not put too much weight on our dreams. If you really remember one well, it should be compared with God's word. There are a few stories in the Bible where God used dreams. If God gave you a dream, it will not contradict his word. The Bible is our final authority, our guide. God apparently used this dream of Joe's to lead him to his word. We have to make use of it. Uh, as it is goodbye, we have to uh, apply it. And they study it a long time. So that's where I got that's where I got to the help from the Bible. I mean, the, the Bible, that's God's word. And it, 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 there is no other way. Right. There is no, no, no other way, no, 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 what the, no matter what the, anybody says. So the, it, it's just good. And I, I, like, I like what I read and I like what I hear. And the more I kept on going services, you hear more. Hey, he said, I never seen that there before. Even today, you see in Psalm, you see in Psalm uh, 46, in one and one and eight, God is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble, and that's uh, so true. You know that can be for He helps every one of us if we let Him, but we have to let Him. We have we have to leave our old but back there. And it's just start you new, know, start brand new again. And he, f f he forgives. He's a forgiving God. He don't rehash in your background. When you return to him, you can't uh, force anybody. 
and God's the one that calls people. Mm -hmm. But what we can show by example, yeah. you know, what we do, what we say, you got to watch what comes out of the mouth. But whatever is here, that's what's going to come out mm -hmm. you know, of the heart. Uh -huh. what, what was it that drew you to Christ in particular? Oh, the first time, uh, way back to the first time when the seed was planted, that's in 1947, I was a young boy, <laughs> 11 years old. That's the first time. Mm -hmm. And the long span after that, because I used to be, I used to listen to the radio. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, I used to listen to, I used to like uh, country music. Right. I used to come on, but I used to fade away. Then the voice come on and said, the world tomorrow, I said, wow, world tomorrow, I I want to find out more what, what the world tomorrow means, but and that never left me, what the world tomorrow is. Curious to, to find out what it, what it meant to world Well, tomorrow. you know, everybody likes to know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, yeah, I, was, I, was, yeah. I was brought to Christ kind of through people yeah. teaching about prophecy, what's going to happen, yeah. and that's kind of from that title, it's probably the same idea. You're wondering, what's going to happen? And then as you listened, you found out the Bible has a lot to say about that. Right, right, right yeah. Do you want to know what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next year? The Bible does have a lot to say about the future. In fact, a lot of the Bible was written predicting the future, some of which has already been fulfilled. It talks about wars, famines, and diseases. It also talks about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, and about our eternal home. Joe continues telling us a little bit more about his journey. Well, you actually made contact with somebody on a personal basis and was getting some Bible teaching and so on, and I guess started going to some uh, services. Yeah. But at that time, uh, you were having trouble in the in the marriage that you were in at the yeah, time, Yeah, before right? that, yeah. Yeah, before, yeah. Even before that, eh? Yeah, so before. was that part of the driving force for you to want to study the Bible and find out what, what's the purpose for living? Was it a bit related to maybe the struggles in your marriage? It's, uh, I'll have to see if it's related to that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Because it did the way it changed. The way things go, I could have gave up. My marriage went bad. I don't know about it or not. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't, it's a good thing to help. Okay. The Bible is good because you, you need lots of it. Now, despite the fact you're finding out about God and started to follow Him, uh, finding out that He, well, are making Him your Lord and Savior, your marriage did fall apart that you had. You had raised a family and then your marriage fell apart, right? Your, left, your wife had left you, right? I didn't want to act like I had nothing happen, but inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you kept trying to follow the Lord throughout that time yeah. period, and you found yeah. comfort yeah. in God's Word? Yes, yeah. yeah. It would be help. And uh, asking different questions to people, different questions, what did this mean? What would that mean? Then you go to services yeah. to help too. And yeah. you meet other people, the, the stories, how they got called. Yeah. And it, 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 it helped, it's a big help. Right. But the only way, that's the only way to. Right, there's there, there, no other way because he, he pulled me through a lot of scrapes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could have got killed where, three, four times. Three, four times. And one of them was uh, a tree? This one was a tree. And then this one again, I got hit here with a tree. Uh huh. Tree, then one of the big tree top fell on me. <laughs> God, my boy, I never got a hard head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
that you're from Garden River and that's where we are here now in Ontario. But Louise, where, where are you from? I'm from Fisher River, Manitoba. Mm -hmm. It's a Cree reservation about 145 miles north of Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. That's where I was raised. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to school, Fish River, Toulon, and then I went to university in Brandon to become a teacher. Okay. And then I met Joe in Niagara Falls in 1988. Okay, before we get into that part, uh, both of you had something in common. Both of you have gone through marriages. Mm -hmm. You've okay. raised children. Yes. And uh, so you have a common experience. Right. But by God's grace, he, he's done something since those, mm -hmm. those hurtful times. Yes. Actually, it's wonderful. Joe was mentioning how he was 11 years old when he first heard about the Lord. For me, I was about eight years old and it was that vacation Bible school in the summertime and I remember um, the the teacher saying you know at the end of the session like it went Monday to Friday and he says this she asked does anyone here want to give their life to the Lord and I said yes I want that so I was about eight years old when the seed was planted so vacation Bible school or Bible camp however they call it is very very important Okay. You know, you never know what's going to be planted there. And for me, that's where it started. Whether you are a parent or teaching young children about God in Sunday school, in Bible camps, VBS, or somewhere else, that seed that you plant may someday change that life. Sometimes it takes hard times before we turn to God. Louise continues. Like I got married young. And the marriage wasn't turning out. I didn't know anybody at all in Brandon when I was going to university. Mm -hmm. And I was so alone, just so heartbroken, lonely. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to quit university. So I knew who to turn to. Mm. I had turned to the Lord. And you know, it's sad, but a lot of us have to go down the road of hard knocks mm -hmm. before we're willing to give up this life. But you know, it was worth it. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful life. I just. I'd never want to go back. It's just, there's no life like it. It's just the best. But anyway, um, my first husband and I, we had a son when I was, when I was going to university. And uh, like I say, the marriage wasn't going well. And, and we separated when my little boy was six months old. Mm. But I continued on in university. And I graduated from there. Then I got a teaching job in Fairford, Manitoba. And in 88, that's when I met Joe in Niagara Falls mm -hmm. at one of the, um, I guess, church conventions, you can mm -hmm. say. And if I understand right, you had a child that had something to do with that meeting? Oh, yes, yeah. Anyway, after there was about 8,000 of us at the meeting. And uh, after services were over, Jason and I were that's up. his son? That's my son, Jason. My son's name is Jason. He was about eight years old. And we stood up and started looking around. And about eight bleachers up, I saw Joe. And I said to Jason, I said, look, Jason, there's a, a fellow standing all by himself. Let's go talk to him. So we went to talk to Joe. And I thought, wow, what a nice person. And I really thought he was a gentleman. And you know how sometimes you talk to people 
and you feel like you've known them all your life. And that's how it was talking to Joe. But anyway, Joe said to Jason and I, before the convention's over, I want to take you and your son and this other lady and her son out for a dinner. I said, okay. So Jason and I went back to our hotel room and he said to me, Mom, you're going to get married, Mom, you're going to get married. I said, Jason, I can't get married. I'm just legally separated from your father. And secondly, you don't marry the first guy you meet. Little did I know years later, <laughs> I did marry the first guy I met. <laughs> and God's hand, God had a hand in that. Um, after the convention was over, everyone was leaving the, the state arena and there was about 8,000 of us going out the doors. And you know how in the, in the arena, there's the inside door, the lobby, then the outside door. Anyway, we were coming through the first set of doors and I could hear somebody saying, Louis, uh, Lorraine, Lorraine, can I get your phone number? Hmm. I said to Jason, someone's calling for Lorraine back there. Lorraine! So I looked and here it was Joe coming with his crutches as fast as he could. And what are the chances out of 8,000 people to find two people with the wrong name too <laughs> and to have me respond. So he still calls you Lorraine? What's my name? <laughs> <laughs> I have to check once in a while. <laughs> or maybe I should check once in a while. <laughs> well, it's Louise, not Lorraine. It's Louise, right. But, but you heard and you responded yes. and that was the start of your exchange. And yeah. Even though he was in Ontario, mm -hmm. uh, living in Ontario and you were still living in Manitoba. Right, roughly once a year he'd phone to see how things were going and asking where I, we're going to go to the next convention. And it wasn't until um, 1991, uh, my son Jason, he passed away at the school where I was teaching. And I thought, um, well, I thought I should phone Joe and let him know. Friends are important, and especially when there is a tragedy or a death close to you. Fellow believers in Christ are particularly helpful to talk to, even by phone many miles away. I'm sure that during the time of grieving over that, whether it be, I don't know how long grieving is, a year, two, they or They say the ten, first year is the hardest. But during that time, I understand you got some long distance phone calls from Ontario from a guy named Joe. Oh yes, yes, yeah. And you know what? Probably a month and a half after Jason passed, his uh, grandson passed away too. So we spent a whole year long distance grieving. And that following year was like a courtship year because they say the first year after a passing, just stay, don't get involved with anyone. Yeah. You know, just keep yeah. everything as normal as possible because wrong choices can be made. But you know, during that time when I was trying to find my ex, I prayed to God and I said, God, if you want me to get married again, I want you to pick the husband. I don't want to mess up this time around. <laughs> and, um, three things I asked for and one of them was I want the first thing I asked for was someone who loved you who followed wants to follow you wants to obey you and secondly someone who has a similar experience as me and thirdly the same nationality because you know the more similarities you have the easier it is on the marriage and God granted me all three in Joe you know just he loves the Lord and our greatest desire is to please him Louise made one visit with her friends to see Joe. Other than that, they were courting over the phone. Their relationship grew until Joe had the courage on one of his phone calls to ask her that important question. Finally, well, I'm going to pop the question, but first, I'm going to prepare myself. I thought, if it's going to be yes, if it's going to be a no, if it's a no, if it's yes or yes, if it's a no, or I'm going to still remain friends with her. She said, no, she, you don't want to get married. I want to still remain friends. So I got on the phone and, 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 and guess what she said? <laughs> she said, yes, yeah, so, so that's what we got engaged over the phone. And we spent so much time on the phone, hours and hours. And like he said, you know, they didn't have phone discounts back then. Like those bills were big. It was worth it. <laughs> so we got to know each other more over the phone. And I knew him from before, like he loved the Lord and it was apparent. His life showed it, his actions. You know, he's such 
a good-hearted person like this. He doesn't just read the Bible, he puts it to use in his life. And the fruit shows, like it says, by their fruit you shall know them. And I saw that in Joe's life. And when he proposed over the phone, I said yes. And so basically it was a dating over the phone because I was still teaching in Fairford. And he was here and I had to finish off my contract. And we decided to get married in Winnipeg because all of my family was there and the church brethren. and. So his side of the family came to Winnipeg and we got married in the city. And that was a beautiful wedding. God worked that out. It was simple, it was beautiful and... The wedding was dry. A, a, lot, a lot of no, fun, no a lot of fun. And you had a good time, huh? Yeah, when God's hand is in it, yeah. things work that good. Yeah, and I can honestly say he's my best friend, you know, and who doesn't like living with their best friend and being with their best friend, you know, and having the Lord first and each other second. You're, you're my best friend too. <laughs> yes. We're each other's best friend. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been, you know, our Christian walk, no one lives perfectly. We learn, it's like children. We make a mistake, we fall down, get back up. Mm -hmm. Fall down, get back up. It's a, mm. it's a growing experience and right. it's wonderful. Yeah. Now you told me a while ago uh, a couple of things that really have helped you that you learned through going to churches. Uh, do you remember what that was? Reading God's Word. Stay close to God. You know, just stay focused in His Word. And you know, that's something that Joe and I do daily. It's not just a Sunday thing that I've put in my time. No, it's seven days a week, 24-7. You know, 365 days a year. And if there's a leap year, you throw in some extra. Right. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? And every morning, before we, we pray, we, before we do open our Bible, we pray and we ask God to bless our Bible study, mm. to open up His Word to us. Mm. Teach us what is it you want us to learn today. Mm -hmm. Help us apply it, because we can't do it on our own. Like Jesus says, without me you cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. And as a Christian, I've tried to do things myself, like, okay, I'm going to be really good today. It doesn't work that way. I finally had to learn, Louise, what don't you understand about without me, you cannot do anything? John 15, 5, I love that scripture. It takes a while for the light bulb to go on sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but God is patient with us. Yeah, he is yeah. so patient. Yeah. So we ask God to be with us in our study. And we ask him, show us, help us understand more, your word more yeah. deeply. Show us what it, how it applies to my life. Give us the strength to apply it for your glory, for your honor, for your praise, you know, and, and, and like how David says in Psalm 23, my cup overflows, and that's how it is when you fellowship with God. Mm. Oh, your cup overflows. You know, it just, there's nothing better than the fellowship of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. It's just wonderful. But it's good to be with people too, right? Of like-minded. Oh, and, absolutely. And you don't have fellowship here in the reserve. So where do you where do you get Christian fellowship uh, these days? Okay, well, we go to a church in the city, Bible Bethel. You know, the messages are great. And it's so wonderful to be with fellow Christians. You know, fellowship with brethren is so important because you can encourage each other. You know, it's just, oh, it's wonderful. certain secrets you've learned that will that meant the difference for you to have a good marriage now that you could share with us something that 
right over here. <laughs> but right but over is here. it because you're studying it together too? Together Martin? too, and together too, obviously. You know, it's a, it's a blessing to, to study it together. Mm -hmm. Alone, it's nice alone, but two, sometimes I don't understand, we, we ask each other, well, well, what is that? Well, how come this is here? Mm -hmm. And then you know you need two. Like you said in the Bible, you would say, we're three meet, two meet, when I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know, the trust and obey the scripture we go through when we read and then we need help. You see, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, the title is Advice to the Young. Help us trust in you, Lord, with all our heart. Mm. Help us never to, to rely on what we think and that we know. Help me to remember the Lord in everything that we do. In Proverbs 16 to 20. Help us pay attention to what, what we are taught and we will be successful. Help us trust in you, Lord, and we will be happy. And you won't be successful. I don't mean rich. I don't mean rich. Successful in God's word. What God uses. And you can happen. Anybody, anybody, anybody that wants. If you if you want bad enough, you will try. Yeah. You, you, you will try your hard. And there's no other way to God but through Jesus Christ. That I am the way. The Bible is not a book that you look at once to figure out how to do something and then never look at it again. It is more like food that we need to take in every day in order to live. Do you feed on the Word of God daily? Is it part of your schedule? The biggest secret in marriage and in the Christian life is spending time reading, studying, and thinking about God's Word. Make that your choice today and every day. Give Him everything. Then we believe you will find true success. May God bless and guide you.